So this train wreck of a knife started out as this kitchen chef knife that I had copper plated when I was testing things for my Leatherman. I wanted to make uh, a bushcraft style knife similar to my Mora knife, similar to my Chima 1, which is like an Ontario Rat 3. Um, probably more in that same size as the Ontario Rat 3 or the Chima 1, um, since I have about the same amount of space there for that. So I'm trying to sort out what I'm going to do for this knife. But I want it to be a bushcraft knife. I started out first by drawing out the shape. You can see it here in uh, Sharpie. And then I cut it out with my rotary tool. Or at least part of it out. I then heated up the, the handle portion of the blade so that I could take the temper out and so I could drill it and cut it off. And with the hacksaw, this was really still even hard after I took the temper out. <laughs> so I hit it and broke it off. You can see um, the little bit that was cut and how easily it broke and the charred wood. With that done, uh, the handle was now a little more malleable and ready to be shaped, and I worked on shaping the rest of it. I had quite a bit on the back of the blade that I wanted to take off. I didn't want the, the thickness of the chef knife. My belt sander, which was 80 grit, wasn't quite doing it, so I got out my grinder, which had, uh, I think it's a 40 grit um, sanding disc on here, and that was able to take it down quite a bit quicker. But it's not as even, so when that was done, I needed to even it out on the belt sander again. And you can tell I have a fresh belt this time. Well, with that shape done, I'm able to now work on the handle. And for the handle, I had also found this letter opener at the thrift store for 50 cents, which has this cylinder handle. And I wanted to use this for the two pins on the handle. Kind of a cool mechanism. I kind of felt bad a little bit, but not completely bad enough to not do it. Um, looking in here, it looks like it's brass, but uh, it looks like it's chrome-plated brass. I want to stick two pins on this. So I just marked these out, eyeballed it kind of in a center, in a place that I thought looked aesthetically pleasing. I actually quite like the shape of this blade. I'm just marking it so I can drill the holes. I'm just punching it so that the drill doesn't travel when I drill it. I don't like how this WD-40 smokes. <laughs> I need to try some lighter, different oil maybe. So uh, with those drilled, uh, this is the material I picked up for handle material. It's a plate. It's kind of this weird ceramic plastic material. I like the copper coating I had on these plates and I want on the the knife, and I wanted to find a material that I could maybe refresh and keep the the handle copper plated and so I wanted to choose something plastic that I thought would do well with the the acid in copper plating so we'll get to that later so I cut out the different pieces I wanted to have four pieces of this plate um, as part of the handle and then I also have a tray that I'd used in a, a previous video for my micarta uh, cashmere micarta S-wing hatchet so I have a little, quite a bit more of this tray still, and I wanted to have kind of alternating blue, red, blue on each side of the handle. That was the plan, at least. So I 
this is the plan of how I wanted to lay it out, kind of the three colors. I'm straightening just one edge, uh, one side, actually both sides I did, so that I could clamp it and drill it out. And this is where the train wreck started. So the blue plate, it, it shattered. The top, or the bottom piece, when it drilled through, it really just destroyed the, the one um, layer of blue handle scale that was on the bottom there. I was very disappointed. It seemed a lot more brittle than I had expected. The red cafeteria tray was a lot more stable. Similar material, but more stable. It was more fibrous. And this blue was was more plastic. And then with that done, it was obvious that two of the pieces of blue were, were really not usable anymore. And I was bummed. But I felt like I still had plenty for the handle with one of each, one blue and one red. So this is how I decided to proceed. But really, this was just the beginning of this train wreck. Trying new materials for knife making. And at that, I'm not the greatest knife maker. <laughs> so I've only messed around a few times. I, I enjoy this. So um, shaping it out, I took, I cleaned up the brass rod and uh, cleaned up the handle a little bit. And now this is the beginning of the next train wreck using five minute epoxy. Maybe not the best idea. I want you to pay attention to that little tray of epoxy as we go through this, uh, if, first, this first little bit. So I'm, I'm really, I'm just, uh, I'm not noticing any issues right now. I'm just coating my material, placing the pins. They're a little more snug than I liked. I should have maybe either drilled the hole a little bigger or sanded those um, pins a little smaller. I'm not sure which, but they were still fitting but five minute epoxy. I want you to watch the epoxy right now. You can see it curing in the video. I'm not noticing it yet, but the epoxy is drying. It's curing. And it was cured. And the problem with this wasn't only that I needed to get some more epoxy, but that the two pieces that I'd already placed together, I still hadn't clamped them had already hardened together and had hardened on the pin that I had placed. And that front pin, the one closest to the blade, wasn't as far as I needed it to be into the handle. And it was already hardened in there. So because I hadn't clamped it, there were still gaps and the epoxy really wasn't squeezed out. So now I'm racing for time. I've already made more epoxy. Uh, trying to squeeze it together. I've already messed up a little bit of the red pin there, trying to get around that last little bit. And this, I, I really felt like I was in a train wreck here. I was not happy. I'd done all this work on the blade. I'd done all this prep work for the handle. And now things just weren't going well. And I felt like I had to race because of this epoxy. And I couldn't undo what I did. This was, at this point, a salvage salvage job trying to just get what I could out of this handle using a hammer trying to pound it on get it on as quick as I could my gloves are all sticking together one of the pieces broke figured I could just glue it with the epoxy still now I'm trying to in hopes that I can clamp it together in any case this was this is where I was not happy I was not not, it was late at night, and things were not the way I wanted them to be. But I wasn't going to give up. I was going to get what I could out of this, hoping that with the epoxy I could make up um, for the errors that I'd had. You can see I still had spaces trying to get this clamp together so it would actually hold. Oh, you hear that? A cracking. Yeah, there was more cracking. So, um, a couple days later, 
I pulled it out. I probably didn't need to wait that long. I just didn't. I didn't work on it on Sunday at all. And uh, there's gaps, there's cracks. I wasn't happy, but I had filled it with epoxy enough that I felt like I could maybe try to reshape the handle and see what I could get out of this. So, back to the belt sander, shaping out the handle material. I'm not sure how durable it's going to be. Um, after the belt sander, I then took it some hand sanding, starting with uh, 120, then I went 220, 340, and then this final one here is 400 grit. After doing that, I also took, I cleaned up the blade up to a 400 grit also. Getting it ready and prepped for the copper plating. I actually thought it looked pretty good here, but the plan all along was to copper plate. And so, um, before doing that, I cleaned it up with some glass cleaner first. And then a little isopropyl alcohol, making sure that I'm getting off as much of the grease and things like that that I can so that the copper plating takes really well on all the surfaces. The copper plating here, I have a solution of muriatic acid, which is five parts distilled water and mixed with one part of muriatic acid. And this is the same solution I've been using for several videos now. And this copper plate is the copper anode that's connected then to the positive terminal of uh, a six volt battery. This is the process I've been using for all my other videos. If you want to check out those that have copper plated a hatchet, and my Leatherman, and a hammer so far. I, I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so, and, and it's kind of a cool process. But you can see in those I talk in detail about it. I'm now just clamping the, the negative terminal to the knife, and as soon as you immerse it, you can see it starts bubbling. The, the solution is really, it's a really quick process. The reason the solution is actually green here is because I've already, already used it and copper ions have um, already gone into the solution. After letting it sit for about two minutes, you can see this dark red copper coating on it. There's kind of a light kind of wet powdery copper coating and under that is the more um, durable copper solution. And since this is a stainless steel knife, um, it the first layer never really takes very well, but you can see there it's not bad. Polish it up with some triple lot steel wool and it's already a little finer then. You can see there it's got the faint copper color to it. And once I cleaned it up again, I dipped it again. I dipped it actually three more times to get the final coating of copper thickness. And I repeated that same process of cleaning it up um, and uh, brushing it off with triple odd steel wool. And this was the result. I actually was really quite happy with how it turned out. Even with the cracks and the train wreck process, it looked, looked quite good. It even copper plated the brass pins that I put in. So look for opportunities to give old things new life and like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. So this is my new knife that I just finished making and I want to see if it will baton and, uh, wood. A few days after finishing I was on a scout camp knife, stick it in, and, and I used it to hit. teach the boys the how knife. to baton and also to test the knife. I wanted to see if it worked. And it seemed to, to work wood. just fine. Like an, like an axe? I was worried the handle might crack when I would hit the handle side, and this it didn't. It held up real well. Scrub oak. So it's not splitting very well. I think I'm hitting a knot. So, not only look for opportunities to give old things new life, but look for opportunities Actually, to serve and to help your community. There Teach those boys good skills. So there's one. This was a fun camp we'll out. Take it we went backpacking. It. It when you're great. splitting wood, if you want it to go so, straight all the way through, again, you we'll go see you on the next video. Time. Okay. Ciao. So I'm doing halfway. And that split well. 
Yeah, this is actually working pretty good. But, so this is one thing. You cannot do this with a folding knife. Why not? Well, what do you think? Why do you think it might not work? And it could fold. Yeah, 